It's been a few months since I got back to learning. During this time I took only like three weeks off because I was sick and this was such an intense time at my job that I literally had no energy for anything more than making videos. Now I'm fine and I'm back on track. I'm almost done with repeating all the basics of Japanese and tomorrow I will be officially starting to learn to end for exam for JLPT. I personally prefer long, intense sessions. So I am spending most of my free time for this particular purpose. Today I'm going to share with you what resources I'm using to learn Japanese on my own. And I can't post links in videos yet, so all the links will be down in the video description. Back in the days when I started learning Japanese, all the knowledge was stored on internet forums dedicated to Japanese language. Most of them no longer exist. So that's why we will fully rely on links from different sites. Also, a few weeks ago, I've uploaded a video about my experience with learning Japanese. And to be honest, I didn't expect it to get so popular in such a short time. I've just started recording for YouTube, so 500 at the moment when I'm recording this. It's something extremely surprising for me, but I guess it's just YouTube who promoted it. So if you haven't seen this video yet, go and check it out first before watching this one. So first of all, you need a list of what you need to learn for the exam itself. For your information, the official list no longer exists as the organizer of the test wanted people to learn for learning than for the exam. I really appreciate this thinking because that's how learning actually should look like. But still learning like 100 random kanji characters, it's not going to help you pass it. You need the actual list. So all the lists that exist already in the internet are kind of outdated. So all the numbers are about how many words or kanji you need to learn for this specific level of the test are approximate. They are countless pages with such lists, but in my opinion most of them are really hard to work with. I personally use in most cases page called JLPT study, which doesn't have the N1 level, the highest one on their page. But it's especially helpful with learning kanji because it's organized in such a straightforward way and it's so easy to learn from it. But if you want to use another site or you need requirements for the highest level, then I also recommend you page Tainos, which has as well all the requirements in text files. So if you want to learn from paper instead from the computer, then you can download them and print them. So you've got your list of things that you need to learn. And now you may feel a little bit overwhelmed because of the amount of things that you need to learn at the same time. Well, actually, you don't need to learn all of them at the same time. That's why the second part of learning is to divide everything into smaller pieces. That's why we have writing, reading, listening, speaking, kanan kanji, grammar and vocabulary. With that knowledge it will be way easier for you to organize your daily routine. Then you can divide everything into smaller pieces. For example, for the lowest level you have like 800 words, around 800 words and around 100 kanji characters. Knowing those numbers and knowing how much time do you have to the exam itself, you can divide it into smaller numbers and adjust it to your daily routine as you need. Just remember about repeating those. Now when you're ready to start the learning, the next tool that you will need is dictionary. My personal favorite is Takoboto because it's very simple to use. I love it for its graphic design. It's also ha it also has the phone app. Some of my friends also prefer another dictionary, Jisho and I can see why. It's a little bit more advanced than the Takaboto and also you can write kanji down there and it will find for you most of the kanji that will be similar to the one that you've written. 
or maybe just the exact one. Another dictionary that I'm using is called Kanji Alive and it's made specifically for Kanji but for the beginners. It contains around 1000 characters because creators of this dictionary assume that after 1000 characters you won't have problems with learning the actual kanji or how to write them down. Also, it has some drawings of the kanji that are resembling the kanji that you're learning right now. So it's way easier to memorize it if you have some problems. We're all set now, so let's start with the actual learning tools. First, we're starting with vocabulary. And I have only one site that I've been using because it was good enough to help me to learn the vocabulary for N5 level and it's called Memorize. Memorize or DEX both are the same page. It's based on flash memorizing technique and it's extremely good for intense studying. All the courses are made by the page owners or the users of the page. And the one that I was using the course for 800 words for N5 level was made by the user and it had such a good quality that it helped me to learn all the words in like two weeks. It's of course free of charge but if you want to get some more learning tools you can buy a premium account for me it's quite expensive but if you have some spare coins then why not. Also Memories has a leaderboard system so if you want a this little more push into your learning then competitive learning is what you need. I always loved video games and ranking systems so I made a really good use out of this. When it comes for learning kanji I'm using three things. Requirement list, dictionary and a simple notebook. At the beginning I highly recommend to you notebook with three lines. It's really helpful when you want to learn to write kanji properly with the right proportions and the actual look of them. Later, when you will be more advanced, you can switch even for the blank notebook. It all depends on your needs. But remember, the amount of strokes, the direction of writing those and also the order of writing them, all of those are predefined. So you actually need to learn them for every kanji separated but don't worry after around 100 kanji you will see the pattern if you don't want to buy a notebook and you want to go for something easier you can look for kanji sheets in the internet there are there are countless of sites in the internet on the internet where you can download those kanji characters have also different readings so don't try to learn just the readings of onyomi and kunyomi how that's how they are pronounced in the dictionaries instead you should learn the full combinations of kanji but there are way more of those than the actual words for the exam that you're learning so for example for kanji one there will be so many variations of combination that you may get confused. There are no actual list of kanji combinations for your actual level, so if you would want to learn only combinations for your exam, it will be very hard to find such a list. In that case, I highly recommend you if you're using Discord, bot called Kotoba. It's specified with learning kanji combinations, it's more like for testing your knowledge, but in such a way that you can literally learn on your mistakes. If you don't use Discord, then it's not a problem. You can use Kotobo on the internet side of the creator side, but the problem is probably you can't save your progress there. I don't really remember. I've been using this on Discord only. Now a few words about listening. Don't limit yourself just for the knowledge that you need for the exam. Of course, it's cool to find some apps that will have some specified lessons for, like for example, cooking, going somewhere, meeting with friends. It's all good. You should listen to those as well, but don't limit yourself. For listening, I highly recommend news sites or news pages. There are also some YouTube channels specified with showing news like 
Japan News 24 or Kansai News 24. You can easily find them on YouTube on your own, but I will link them down in the description as well. Also, they are really helpful apps for your phone. So if you really love to listen to radio, the first one, Radio Japan. It's specified in Japanese auditions and Japanese podcasts where podcasts are the best part of this application. Learning from podcasts is way better than from listening to actual news because they are mostly only talking. Just find your own favorite podcast and listen to it as much as you can. The second app is called Replayo and I was today years old when I found out that this is actually the Polish app. Replayo provides you with radio stations from all around the world. You may also look for other apps for beginners for listening or you can just simply look for Japanese YouTubers and listen to them, put them in the background, just listen to what they are saying. You don't need to understand this, remember, that's the first rule of listening to the new language, any language. Just listen to this, you don't need to understand it. Well, maybe not on the beginning, later you will need to. Reading. It's hard to find something specified for a level, so if you are a beginner I recommend to you looking in your Google Store or Apple Store for applications that have stories for bedtime for kids. They are really simple to read, they have simple words and there are countless of those. Most of them are free of charge, some of them need to be paid off. Just do your own research. The main phrase is Ehon. If you're a little bit more advanced, just try looking for NHK Web Easy News. They are meant for children, but you can learn from them as well, you can read them. They also have listening site speaking. It will require from you looking for a partner. I'm not putting any specific site in here in the description because most of the pages that are based on speaking are paid so if you want to find a partner look for a discord server or facebook page or anything else that is specified in learning japanese and find someone on your level the last part of learning grammar for this part i've been using mostly books mostly those from poland so i will just show them for a moment all the books from polish japanese academy of japanese language from Warsaw. For the rest of you who don't understand Polish, I had to go through hundreds of pages that I've been saving through those years to find the pages that are based on learning grammar. You will just need the list of grammar you've got in the very beginning because this page is not divided into JLPT exam levels. This page is called Imabi. This page is focusing on the grammar itself and it's really easy to move on the side and its design looks really cool, simple, it should be easy for you to learn from this. It just doesn't have any exercises. After learning, it's a good idea to test your skills, especially before exam, because you want to make sure that you know those, right? So for example, Kotoba that I mentioned before is testing out your kanji no knowledge memorize on its own, it's testing your knowledge all the time, but if you want just the test specifically, look for them in the internet. There are hundreds upon hundreds of pages with JLPT exams, there are arch archived exams, there are exams made by the users, by the people who are learning this language. There are so many of them that you will have no problem to find them on your own. We went through all the parts of learning Japanese, but there are a few more words that I want to tell you. First, books. The most popular ones are Minna no Nihongo and Genki. Both of them are really good, but they are also pricey as well. When it goes for paper dictionaries, I have one on my shelf, but I've never actually used this, because come on, we have internet right now. Another thing. Duolingo. Duolingo brings a lot of controversies with its value of learning and correctness as well. From my own experience, I may only tell you that Duolingo is extremely 
annoying. Around lesson 15 out of 90, it starts giving you some examples that gives you this strange feeling that everything has been Google translated. And the fact that when you enter the answer that is accepted and a few questions later it's rejected, it's not helping at all. I have abandoned Duolingo around 18 lessons because I couldn't stand it. It was so goddamn annoying. In my opinion, Japanese Duolingo should be fully fixed. First, I don't know, 12 lessons are perfect. When I went back to learning Japanese after a few years, it was perfect as a reminder. But for the actual learning, when I went for these 18 lessons, no. Especially now when they changed the design of the page. Now it's so annoying to learn from it. If you want to use Duolingo, I can stop you, but I don't recommend it at all. There are many better pages like Memorize. Don't use Duolingo. Last but not least, other materials. There are hundreds of materials in the internet. There are countless pages that you can learn from. There are thousands upon thousands of people that you can learn from. There are people who can learn with you. There are apps for your phone. There are educational games. There are even videos on YouTube specifically for learning Japanese. Resources and possibilities for learning Japanese language are unlimited. And today I've shown you only those that I was using for years and those that I'm using right now. Before I end up, a few tips for you. Some of those were mentioned in the previous video, but I have a few more for you at this moment. Tips for learning Japanese. Just remember, surround yourself with the language. Force your brain to adapt to it. Don't do everything at once. Otherwise, you may feel overwhelmed. Be systematic. Try to avoid longer breaks. Otherwise, you may lose the feeling of this language and you may even abandon it like I did a few times. Speak out loud words that you're learning. It's the part of learning as well. You need to learn how to pronounce it. You need to get used to actually telling those words. Learn on your predefined scheme. It will help you to remain the consistency. Don't be afraid of making mistakes. Learn from them. Don't be stressed if someone is telling you that you're wrong. But if they are mocking you at the same time, don't worry as well, they are probably assholes. Don't be afraid to ask and, after all, never give up. And that will be all what I wanted to say to you today. It summarizes all the resources that I've been using. All the tips and tricks I told you today, I use them on a daily basis while learning this language and they helped me a lot. I hope they will help you as well. Also, this video wasn't sponsored. All the pages that I've shown you were shown you out of my heart. I truly trust them. But it would be amazing if you would subscribe to this channel. I can't believe I'm telling this one more time. Well, subscribe to this channel, like this video, share it with your friends, and I wonder how much time it will take me before it stops being creepy for me. I have no idea. Bye!